This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. One of the special ops guys moved around the trio and tossed a duffel bag into the dirt at her feet, while the female Spartan heaved another duffel at Nico. He shot her a glare, jerking down his mask to say, How does it feel, stealing our mother's blanket? Les's head turned sharply in his direction. Her eyes above the brown strip of cloth she'd chosen to cover her features went wide, as he unzipped the bag to check through the items he'd requested, muttering, Bet it really makes you feel like a badass, huh? The Spartans didn't reply, though the female lifted her brow and gave him a flat, unimpressed look, her jaw tight. My projections and my father's items? Ryan asked. The big guy patted a small bag draped over his shoulder, as Han said. It's all here, and the salvage from Giranos A. It's in the cart, Ryan said easily, gesturing to the transport behind them. The six special ops soldiers moved forward immediately to scan the cart. It's all yours. My guess is you're really looking for this, though. She tossed him the small box she carried. This data core was the only real thing of value we pulled from the site. Han lifted his hand to catch the box, but one of the special ops guys, the one with the raven hair, white at the temples, caught the box in midair. He was all business, as he used some type of scanner to read the core. A few seconds passed before he lifted his head and gave Han a curt nod. The core went into a strange, glossy white container, and then the man passed it off to three soldiers, who disappeared with it back into the crowd. Han actually looked relieved, which surprised her. The Spartans, though, seemed anything but. Ryan glanced around the market and saw that they were starting to draw more than enough attention. Her pulse quickened. By now, Ram would have already let slip via local chatter that Ryan and her crew were in Port Joy. Any time now. She held out her hand. Okay. My goods. Han hesitated. Look, fair trade, right? That was the deal. You give me back my belongings and we're done. You leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. She looked at the big guy. And please remember, we didn't start this shit. The big guy gave her a brief, enigmatic look before continuing to monitor the square. From his breast pocket, Han pulled out a small chip container and handed it to Ryan. She took it and tossed it over to Nico. He scanned the contents and the chip. Yup, it's a clean copy of Little Bit's projections. Vid files are good, too. No corruption. As promised, Han said, then reached into his other pocket and pulled out a small piece of paper. She frowned at it, not interested in whatever offer he wanted to make. Take it. Consider it. Get in touch if it interests you. Ryan snatched the paper and shoved it into her pants pocket. The big guy handed her the bag he held. Your personal items, he said. Things she'd collected over the years or brought with her from Earth and from her time on the Hakon. It wasn't much, but just like for Lessa, some things mattered. Ryan took the bag handles, but the Spartan didn't let go. Her tension skyrocketed. You do not want to start something here. I think we'll manage, he replied. Beyond his shoulder, Ryan saw the crowd being pushed aside and felt immense relief. Strange that the arrival of six elites marching through the market would make her feel glad, but the Sangili's appearance would give them the chance they needed. Uh, Ryan? She turned at Nico's warning. To the north, a band of Kigyar pirates were making their way down a side street. Then, from one of the bars, a stirring of patrons turning their way, almost certainly human bounty hunters just picking up on the news. And from another, more Oni spooks dressed as mercs rose from their seats. Ryan frowned at the Spartan. I see you brought friends. He scanned the area with a perceptive eye, his mouth drawn into a grim line. I see I'm not the only one. Oh, they're most definitely not my friends. Here we go. The big guy reached to his waist to pull out restraints. That's not going to work a second time. Ryan jerked the bag out of his grasp and tossed it to Nico. Run! The advancing parties increased their speed to reach the square. Nico and Lessa bolted down the street, pursued by pirates and Oni. She didn't worry about them. They'd lose their pursuers long before returning to Ace. 
Lessa and Nico were in their element. Growing up on the dusty streets of Valeria, those two knew exactly how to use a place like...